Hey there, synth and tech enthusiasts. Ever wonder what happens when you blend the raw power of the Dirty Wave Mate synthesizer in Ableton Live with the mesmerizing worlds that can be created in Unreal Engine? Well, wonder no more, because today we're diving into a walkthrough of a reactive visualizer workflow that turns sound into stunning visuals right before your eyes. Imagine watching every beat and note you play transform into a dynamic light show synchronized with your music like never before. From animations to effects, this visualizer isn't just a treat for the eyes, it's a whole new way to experience your music, all in real time at that, with no offline rendering required. So stick around as we explore how Ableton Live and the Dirty Wave Mate can control a cascade of interactive visuals in Unreal Engine. Whether you're a seasoned synth master or a curious filmmaker, you won't want to miss this fusion of music and technology. But first, there are a few prerequisites required in order to get things up and running. The first variable being the synthesizer itself, the Dirty Wave Mate, which is a portable tracker sequencer and synthesizer, all powered by the TNC microcontroller. If you're not able to get your hands on either the version 1 or version 2 of the Mate, it's actually possible to build one yourself, as the creator of the Mate, Trash80, has made the software side of things free to those who are willing to take the time to build it themselves in whatever fashion they see fit. The second important variable would be the 3D model of the Mate, which I bought on Sketchfab. With some additional UV wrapping and texturing work done in Blender, getting the Mate up and running inside of Unreal is a pretty quick and painless process. The third variable are some blueprints and Max for Live devices as supplied by the SEM and Tris AV Club. These are needed as it allows for the incoming MIDI to OSC data to be parsed and used in Unreal Engine to control whatever you so desire. And finally, the fourth and final variable would be OBS. The Mate has this really handy feature where you're able to plug it into a computer and use the monitor instead of the built-in screen on the actual piece of hardware. This is an awesome feature for this use case, as with OBS, it's then possible to screen record the Mate's session, which can then be brought into Unreal and used as a video texture on the screen. So with a little bit of blueprint scripting, it's possible to trigger the screen recording to start at the exact same time you hit play in Ableton, alongside the exported stems from the Mate. Now, I like to take a kit bashing approach when building my environments, as I'm not a 3D modeler, and nor do I really wish to be. So at the start, I like to scour the internet for free Creative Commons assets to use on websites such as Sketchfab. If I'm not able to find what I'm looking for after going through that process, I like to purchase assets and kit bashing packs from companies such as Kitbash 3D and Big Medium Small, both of which I actually used in this video. In particular, the Refinery Pack by Kitbash 3D for the Industrial Environment and the Industrial Zone Pack by Big Medium Small for the rigged construction workers and additional props as seen throughout the environment. Between these two resources, I was able to build out everything I needed environment-wise for the project. Now, while these two packs aren't necessarily the cheapest resources, since I'm not a 3D modeler, I find being able to spend a couple hundred dollars on assets in order to save me weeks, if not months worth of work, to be a pretty fair and worthwhile investment. Especially since I'll definitely be using them more in future videos as well, therefore offsetting the initial budget for the project. So once all the desired assets are acquired and put into my Unreal project file, I then like to just experiment and place the modular pieces around, kind of like playing with a more complicated LEGO kit. After spending a few days doing this, I came up with a symmetrical design for a nonsensical refinery plant, which then allows me to start on the next step of the workflow. Setting up all the cameras, along with the various instances of where the Dirty Wave mates will reside. This step essentially feels like a god mode version of photography, as I can quickly navigate around the refinery plant and place cameras wherever I see fit. Whether that be 100 meters in the sky, or impossible to navigate locations. After all of that is set up, it then comes down to designing and placing the various effects and events around the environment, such as the extra Dirty Wave Mate models rotating in random directions when receiving MIDI inputs from either the kick drum and snare, or a morphing particle cloud as driven by the wobble bass. 
After the first pass of setting up the camera angles and effects is complete, I then brought the construction worker model from the industrial zone pack into Mixamo for some quick and easy character animations, as I wanted the refinery to feel at least a little occupied while everything else is going on. Once the appropriate animations were assigned, I then brought that into Unreal to start populating the environment. Once the environmental variables were taken care of, the next step was getting the Dirty Wave Mate model set up with the screen recorded session using the web browser player as provided by Dirty Wave. To achieve that, I then needed to set up a blueprint that adds not only a float cycle to the Mate's model to help keep things animated, but also a means to trigger the video once I hit play in the Ableton session. After the initial Unreal session was set up, I then hopped back over to Ableton to transcribe the exported stems and MIDI channels so I could then trigger various effects inside of Unreal Engine. I also mapped out the generative wobble base parts I wrote with the Dirty Wave Mate using automation data in Ableton alongside a plugin called OSC Par. That way, I could control the rotation and scale of the wobble base effects. It's also required to dedicate one of the MIDI channels to trigger the video file to start inside of Unreal, as mixing it in with the other MIDI channels could cause resetting issues with the video file. Once the Ableton session was all ready to go, the last step was finalizing the reactive elements. Now, in my previous videos, I had built some blueprints that allow for things such as MIDI notes to trigger Niagara and Cascade effects, both in static locations and in random locations, as determined by a random point and bounding box. So with these type of blueprints already set up to go, it was then just a matter of choosing the appropriate effects for each of the instrumental variables needed along with the placements of said effects. So for example, using electrical sparks and lightning hits on the power lines in conjunction with the kick drum and snare. That way, the synchronized effects at least are tied in tandem with the environment, as opposed to my usual impact hits spawning around the environment with no real connection to what the environment can naturally be outputting and or reacting to. This variable is a never ending work in progress, as there's still tons to explore in getting everything to operate in tandem with each other. After everything is all set up environment and effects wise, it then just comes down to recording the final output in real time as the Ableton and Unreal session plays out with OBS. I personally love that this all works in real time, as if I were to render this 5 minute video with an offline renderer at say 10 seconds of frame in 4K, it would take around 20 to 25 hours to get one take rendered depending on the frame rate as opposed to getting it all done in real time in just 5 minutes. This then allows me to iterate 100 times more than previously done, which is incredibly creatively liberating as it completely takes the stress off of the rendering process, while also encouraging a more improvisational spirit since it's possible to adjust anything more or less immediately. I also tend to make quite a few mistakes that I never notice until it's recorded, so it's at least a minimal hassle to redo 5 minutes worth of work compared to another 24 hour long render pass. After all of that, you should finally have a working reactive visualizer using the Dirty Wave Mate synthesizer, Ableton Live, and Unreal Engine. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into how this approach to visualizers can bring your music to life in Unreal Engine. If you found this video helpful and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and keeps you in the loop with all my latest creative experiments, tutorials, and more. Got questions or ideas for future videos? Drop them in the comment sections below. I love hearing from you and your input helps shape what I make next. Thanks for watching and keep creating.